Two trains running on the top of my bed. Snooping as usual, I see. Well, in this video, I'm not sure it'll be quite the cool, but I did a flip flop origami, Latin Bird toy view, uh, which contains four flip flop origami, Latin Bird toy products. And yes, this is actually going to be much more of a different video this time. When you watch this, because not only am I actually just going to show you four, but I'm actually going to show you five. So, what's much better than having four? Having five flip flop origami, Latin Bird toys. And on the top of my bed, we've got two electric multiple unit trains, being the E657 on the tiny blue track, and the E253 on the classic ground Trackmaster track. And speaking of Trackmaster, I've got a Thompson French um, character, I think his name is... Oh, that was a bit of a hit, eh? Let me just show you what we've got. And it's this guy here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the handle or Proteus, I think that's his name. And he's pulling quite a long train of cargo wagons, or good wagons, or freight wagons I would like to say, eh? carrying a huge variety of goods, and we've got a very interesting section of four pieces of straight tummy track, and it looks like Proteus is going towards it now, but this video is more related to flattened birds, something other than, you know, what we often see in toy views like this, or what I often make in my toy views, paint sets like these. And it's actually very amazing. In fact, it actually brings a whole bunch of noise to the house. But anyways, without even starting to basically gaze at the trains for a fairly long time, I might probably put the webcam somewhere around like that, of course. Back to where we started. And mind you, we're going to take a look at some flip up origami. Clapping with toys with one of our first flip up products here. Oh, that was a bit of a hit. I think every time when you hear these trains clash together, that's when, well let's just say, the noise starts to basically accelerate, or to amplify I would say, 13 pounds, and it's actually one of the first products I've actually made, this one here is the Inland Oyster Catcher Pre-Breeding Migration Set or Trial Pack, so they are compatible with water, and it is actually quite an old product, because I actually did this product way back on the 20th of March 2020, before I was you know, sick with COVID-19, maybe I might be totally wrong, there's a little red dot there because of the coronavirus outbreak. The back of the packaging looks like that, and mind you, it looks so, so simplistic, yet very anime looking at the same time. And there's a very interesting fact here, it says oyster catches inhabit on coastal areas mainly, but they can also be found inland when breeding. It's actually quite a very interesting fact, eh? You know what's funny, I initially thought, wow, is that really true? Well, not always, because you might be able to find... Oh, there's another crash here, but hopefully there's not... Wow. No signs of derailment at the moment, though, that's what I was trying to say, eh? Whoa. No signs of banging at there at the moment, though. Um, I'm pretty sure you can still see these birds inland during winter as well. Like, if you go to Sandwell Valley, I'm pretty sure... In Sandwell, there might be a, an RSPB reserve, and they might have oyster catchers residing there, even during the winter, outside the breeding season, of course. So, let me just go ahead and unpack this. I'm sure we we'll need to have the unpacking footage as well. Oh, it's going to be quite tricky, because we've got a webcam on the corner of my bed. Let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah. I wonder what we've got inside. It's actually quite simplistic, I would say. Oh. I think that's just about it, and we've just had a bit of a clash between these two multiple units. Brave yourselves. You two, please. And in this set comes some very interesting pieces. And I wonder what these are. Um, I don't know what these are. I wonder what these green things are supposed to be, but I think they're supposed to be like water plant like models. I would say like, you know, lilies. I would say I think lilies are perfect for floating. And what an, oh my god, these trains will never stop clashing with each other. Now, every time when I hear these trains clashing, I think that might be a sign of death. But these trains might not work again, maybe, or not. But anyway, let me just continue on this review. We've got more and more of these. I think some of them have been folded into different shapes. Others are, you know, they're supposed to be designed like that. That sort of design, like that. Sort of reminds me of a, a head of a, a bear or something, I don't know. Oh, making sure we don't want to derail the train, and we're going to take a look at one of the oyster catchers first. Uh, first thing to note is that all the oyster catchers 
don't have any signs of detailing which are pen related. Maybe that eye looks like it's been... Oh no, I think I might have moved the train layout just a bit further away so that we can stop them from... Oh, it's even clashing from that side here as well. But that's actually quite nasty I'd say, but let's have a look at the oyster catcher. It's got those beautiful white lines on each wing. Very, very cool looking. In fact, I've only just seen three, you know, real oyster catchers. One at Cardiff, when I went there during around, well, let's just say, on the 4th of May last year. Oh, the good old days, and I actually saw two during my trip to Somerset. I think it was Portishead, which is a very nice coast of town, and boy, these trains won't stop crashing with each other, though. Makes a very nice clicking sound. That's a very good signature sound of what flapping bird toys are all about. Might be looking forward to see these beautiful wading birds in the future, I would say. It's got a beautiful looking um, yellowish, orangey sort of coloured eye. And I don't think they're detailed with felt tips, which is amazing because if there, if there were detailed with felt tips and if they were played in the water, there will be some chaos. Uh, very similar designs. Um, there's a lot more orangier than you initially thought on oyster catchers because I think they can they can be quite red on, on the colour of the beak. I'm pretty sure the beak colours can be a bit red or orange. Maybe I would probably say a lot more reddish orange. As I would probably say, I'm sorry, I'm actually having trouble to say here. But look at this. They've got a beautiful looking black tail end or grey tail end because you know it's done by pencil and whatnot. And, oh god, these trains will never stop clashing. Let me just move this one a bit. Whoa! Sorry. Um, yes. And it's actually quite interesting. I've also got a beautiful, um, well, let's just have a look closer here. Uh, which part am I actually going to be seeing here? Maybe this section. There's a beautiful white section there, running down to the bottom part of the bird here, where it meets towards the tail. The back part, I would say, I mean. But yeah, you get the gist, though. But what's quite funny is, is that all these birds, if I show you proof to you, eh, they don't actually have names. And the reason why they don't have names is because, before I actually finished this product, uh, I actually felt sick. And I actually couldn't even finish my dinner that well, so... Mind you, I had to head straight towards the sink, the toilet sink, and I barked out my meal. And that was like the beginning of quarantine time. Yes, time was there, and mind you, when time flew by, uh, I got a funny feeling, actually, that was basically the start of my quarantine. And also, and that was also before I actually got addicted to YouTube poops. You know, you know the classic Zelda and Mario as well as Sonic, you know, CDI YouTube poops. That was so hilarious, wasn't it? And if you remember that on the Tatap Origami Clapping Birds, uh, toy view which had four products in it. The recent one with, you know, the Hell Miners, the Javan Spurs, the Egrets and, you know, the green Egret stalk that looks like Ezlo from Legend of Zelda, the Mission uh, Minish Cap, that's what I'm trying to say, eh? Uh, check that one out. Uh, you find that one out hopefully on on the end part of the video, eh? Which will be quite amazing. Yep, there's another one of these oyster catchers here. All of them haven't got names. That's just about it. Not much to say, but Oh, I would literally say they're not too bad indeed. Um, yes. Here we've got that friendly world. And mind you, these uh, lily pads, they look quite funky looking as well. It's normally they don't look like that. In reality. Not sure if you could, I could literally just show you what they actually look like. If I bring the webcam a bit like so, I think that's what they look like. And that's what they look like on the other side. Very cool, isn't it? Very cool. It looks like I've actually just flipped the camera just a bit though. Whoa. Man, I just feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe after, um, you know what, if I do have some future plans after lockdown, I might have a trip to the Little Hills, which is actually not that far. That'd be a very nice place. And, uh, mind you, these trains are going extremely crazy though, especially that white one there, the E657. And oh my god, it is literally uh, chronically doing a very fast, like really silly fast move on this layout because I've just fitted a much, much brand new sort of double A battery. In fact, that battery must have been there just before quarantine. Well, to be quite honest, I think for today, 
We're not buying batteries at the moment. And um, yes, very, very nice. Let's take a look at the other product that we've got though. And I had a pen falling down here. It's this one here. It is called the Lesser Blackback Girls versus Seahorses Pop Pack. And yes, this looks very weird. Uh, generation 114. I don't know if I'm going to bring that new generation up. It's all down to one of which schools are, are actually going to be opening. I'm pretty sure it's always going to be primary rather than secondary because I do hear that. Yep, yeah, there's the price there, 14 pounds going on, or 15 pounds. I do hear that secondary schools are going to be closed until, let's just say, September, but hopefully this confirmation is going to be true or false, depending on what you actually, you know, going to describe it or kind of think about it. There's one of these here as well. It's actually quite interesting. A lot of the lesser blackback girls are in breeding from the They actually haven't got any products that relate into black headed girls that have breeding plumage like you know their chocolate brown heads which is funny in fact they're supposed to be really common outside the breeding season and what's quite funny is I've actually haven't made them a lot though at the moment though I might try and make some during let's just, I'll probably say let's just say when black headed girls are returning here maybe during July or late June got a funny feeling I don't see any black headed girls in my area now until hopefully about uh, the middle part of summer but I am still seeing these species here, the lesser blackbacks so let me show you one of the lesser blackbacks uh, which looks very 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 similar to that of a heroin girl uh, it's very interesting, I don't actually uh, make a lot of seagull products these days because of, well let's just say COVID-19 and mind you they look so cool Yep, the details are very similar to the other ones, yep, we've seen it before. And they've got a very weird, well let's just say, very weird sort of name, in a sense, that the way they are literally designed. And that seagull is just flying around, across the whole train layout, inspecting if the trains are behaving so well. Reminds me of that very funny webcam footage last year in London where there were two seagulls in London throughout the, um, was it like, was it like in a highway or was it a road? I don't know. It was pretty interesting though, that BBC News report. And over here we've got some seahorses and they're coming in three colour variations. We've got, well it looks like to be, if I get the camera to focus on that one nicely, we've got a purple one though. Okay, it's very interesting, we've got a purple colourisation. Um, so you always got a very nice purple sort of colorization or violet one, I would say. There's the other one here. This one's more of a different color. And I think it's orange. If I come a bit close here, I think it's orange, yep. Looks pretty orange to me. I think that's the, the thing I'm actually having trouble for these three. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but I think it's their eyes that I'm actually having trouble to focus with. And let me show you the brown one, which looks more like gold, you can start to see it, some beautiful looking colours into it, they nearly said the word colourisation, didn't I? And I'm pretty sure they're based on the short snouted you know, seahorse, I, so I think it's like a species of seahorse, it is. Um, I think it's in the UK, I think it's found in our country and also parts of the Atlantic Ocean in Europe, I think. Okay, I think, uh, I think yeah, I'll probably say the rest of the uh, Atlantic Ocean uh, where you can find these seahorses, the short snouted seahorses. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Looks pretty cute. And there's the other one here as well. Uh, looking very perfectly oh. you know, It's quite funny, I actually say that these seahorses don't look like horses to me, but they're just generic seahorses. Uh, perfect meal for a seagull. Uh, naturally, of course, I'm just going to repack them inside. You know what's funny? Uh, I'm actually not going to show you the packagings when I'm repacking all the other items because for work and worker, that's going to probably make the trains derail and then I have to probably, um... I have to probably restart the whole video and try and make it all over again. But I, ha I should probably continue because we've got more it's like origami flapping big toys to review along the way. We're going to take a look at this one here next. This one can be more simplistic because this one, this one costs about £7.50. And this time instead of a red dot on the right of course we've got a left 
Red dot. And it's called the Great Spotted Woodpecker. If I get the title quickly though, Great Spotted Woodpecker family pie pack with fake. Uh, what does it say here? Let me just get the camera to focus that well. Or to look closely on the packaging there. It says fake mealworm beetle and it's an adult one. I'm pretty sure it is. And it's actually not one of these real mealworm beetles that you get from these pet stores or wildlife garden centres that you feed with birds or reptiles or any other creatures like that. And we've got a very nice cute picture of a female great spotted woodpecker and we've also got a little um, juvenile, it could be a baby one. And on the other side we've got a male great spotted woodpecker um, showing what it looks like to be a mealworm beetle, an adult one of course to a juvenile. You know, it's quite funny when I think of great spotted woodpeckers, they're like the European or the, well let's just say the old world cousins to that of the pileated woodpecker that we find in the US. I haven't seen these before but they look quite interesting. I actually did a video um, in March 2019 where we actually did a toy view, or well, I actually did a toy view about uh, some woodpecker Pokemon. Was it like Picky Peck? Yep, that's right, Picky Peck and Tom Beak. And we also had Toucan, which was like um, the Toucan sort of Pokemon that we've got there. That's just about it. That's what we've got. And look at just the camera to go here. Whoa! That's pretty fast, eh, for that train. Look at that. I think the battery looks like it's in full potency, I believe. But I believe that battery is set to basically drain, hopefully after I make this video and probably publish it onto YouTube. But anyways, without any time consuming, um, you know, very excessive amounts of time consuming sort of time, let's just go ahead and take a look at this beautiful male great spotted woodpecker. And mind you, it's actually getting very noisy because we've got Proteus pulling the freight train, or the cargo train, and we've got these two multiple units doing the rounds as well. Okay, this is a male, great spotted woodpecker. Now, if I get the camera, or should I say webcam, uh, close enough, uh, I can tell it's a male because it's, there's literally like a little crimson uh, red patch on the back of its head, which is, I believe, or the neck. Maybe it could be the head, it could be the neck, and I'm pretty sure the back part of a neck is called a nape, if I remember. It's got a very nice looking uh, red back with what it looks like to be a grey or a black tail well to be quite honest I would definitely say that if I was going to be you know changing colours from black to grey if I was opposing black as grey I would say grey as black um, that would probably mean that the model is quite cheap in the way it's been designed or maybe I'm just using an alternative colour in order to resemble the real thing but not there's a beautiful looking symmetrical wing pattern there. I'm just holding the camera just to show you what this bird looks like. Very, very nice. Got some beautiful um, white patches there. But it's funny, there's actually no signs of spots though on the wings there. Maybe there is. Um, I don't think you can see the spots on these birds. But luckily enough, they don't produce flocks. They just literally, you know, I'm pretty sure they have pairs or anything like that. They can be in pairs or singular mode. They can be ones or twos. This one here is a female one, and you can tell it's a female one because there's no red markings on the back or its nape. Um, on its nape, I would say. And there you go, there's the red back part with the tail once again, very similar in design. But the head with the eyelashes on it, she looks so different. And we're going to take a look at what the wings look like, very similar to the male. And let's take a look at this beautiful looking beetle. Okay, it's just a very simplistic looking uh, beetle. I'm pretty sure it's like a young one. And hopefully this is just what well, it looks like to be a paper model of a beetle. It looks like a spider, but mind you, it's only got six legs. I'm pretty sure it looks more like a scarab beetle than, let's just say, a mealworm beetle, in my opinion, I would say. But, yeah, that's what they look like, beetles. I think the thing which is missing there are these feelers. If they had feelers, they would look like a lot more like actual beetles than anything else more like, you know, a fictional sort of feelerless beetle. <laughs> what a great pun, eh? And we're going to take a look at these beautiful looking uh, baby ones here. Got the very similar sort of design here. I think they're juveniles, actually. I uh, just keep on hearing those trains clashing. That's not nice to see or hear. And there's the other one. 
Uh, I don't think they've got any eyelashes or anything like that. I think one of them doesn't have eyelashes or... In fact, both of them don't have eyelashes, which is interesting. Uh, it's quite a bit hard to tell whether it's male or female when you think about chicks. Or juveniles, that's what I have to say. Very cute looking. Uh, I've got a funny feeling that these woodpeckers uh, are more common than the closely related and much more rarer lesser spotted woodpecker. And I'm going to put this webcam right there because I think this product, of course, is finished. But we are not finished with this video because I've got a couple of more videos, or should I say, a couple of more products to do so. There you go, that's the one here. In fact, I've already done a couple of videos actually that relates to the flapping birds before. Here's another one of these there. Okay, this one here, crested green egret stalks and juvenile family five packets. The return of Hezlo from the Minish Cap. Oh yes, Legend of Zelda. Yay, 27 pounds. Once again, we've got the freaking red dot because we're suffering from COVID-19. This whole freaking lockdown is easing, but don't you really think that easing the lockdown is wrong? Isn't that such a bad idea to basically just ease the lockdown for, well, let's just say for, I don't know, probably just go outside and just have a bit of fun and whatnot, you know, practice a whole bunch of social distancing, but anyways, here on this set we can see what it looks like to be a male, uh, green, egret stalk with a crest on it, that looks like Eslo from, as I said earlier, Legend of Zelda, the Minish Cap, chasing a bunny rabbit for prey. And we've got another one here, looks like a female rabbit, looks like she's she's about to mourn her husband there, it looks like he's about to be gobbled by him, of course. And we're going to take a look at this one here, we've got a female and a juvenile. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Very beautiful indeed. Let's just go ahead and see what this product really is all about. Making sure I'm going to do the unpacking shot, because I'm quite curious as you are. Oh yeah, Let's see what we've got. We've got the stalks out, and we've got one rabbit, and there's the other rabbit as well. So we've got two rabbits, and we've got three stalks. Okay, so let me take a look at, I'm going to start off with the juvenile one here, because this one looks slightly smaller than the other ones, and oh boy, these phones are starting to clash, eh? My goodness me, it looks so beautiful, doesn't it? It looks so beautiful, it looks like a peacock in the way it's been designed. As you would obviously expect with these birds, of course, they've got a very nice green plumage with a pretty small tail, but not as small as I would actually think. Uh, oh, I've just burped! <laughs> this is like the previous video I did where I actually just burped. And it's got black feet, once again, very similar. Very interesting sort of ID telling and whatnot. Oh, these trains are clashing, aren't they? They certainly are. Maybe they're literally just clashing because there's not enough space in the bed. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know what? I shall have to make a much bigger layout right down on the floor rather than just the bed. But let me just take a look at the female one here because this is very similar to the other one that I did. Oh, another clash! That's another train fight, isn't it, eh? Another train fight! Well, I don't want the camera to fall down, eh? Uh, here's another one of these. Uh, beautiful uh, stalks. Very cool looking. It actually flaps pretty good too as well. And uh, let's just take a look at the face as always. Beautiful looking and we've got to see her magnificent looking eyebrows. No supercilium but mind you her eyes look so menacing looking as well. Uh, pretty evil eyes. Uh, eagle eyed I'd say. Or evil eyes. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Very cool looking isn't it? Whoa! Oh, it looks like with these trains clashing with each other, I think they're going to have far much better days. Um, whoa, I think, I wonder which one's going to survive. Is it going to be the white one, or is it going to be the red one? Uh, I don't know which, which one's going to be. What, oh, they're coming through. Oh, sorry, I just have to get back into my toy view, eh? Um, that's just about it, the female, and we're going to take a look at the male. Which is actually quite different to the other male that I actually had recently because, once again we've got trains crashing here, um, the eye lines here, the lines in the eye look actually a lot more thicker uh, than before. And it's not just the crest which is different but also the eye lines as well. The line looks so thicker than before, if I can show you clearly, they're actually a lot more bolder than the other 
um, stalker, I think it was actually a lot more thinner. Uh, it actually had much more thinner lines than this one here. And mind you, this is so interesting indeed to take a look at. Once again, it looks very similar indeed. But the, the other difference is, is that they also have no names, which is very weird because I actually did a video about these birds and the other ones had names in them, but these ones don't. Even the juvenile doesn't have its own name, and if I show you the juvenile, there's no name here, which is very absurd. And maybe I need to put these up with names, hopefully after I've made this tour of you and blah blah. But let me take a look at the bunny rabbits next, because I'm just quite curious as you are. This one here is, uh, yep, it's just a male, it's just a little toy bunny rabbit there. It's got little whiskers. Yeah, and these trains are still clashing. It's just still clanging and banging around. There's a female one here. Reminds me of that scene out of Watership Down. Remember that whole horror thing? You know, Watership Down? That could be the best nightmare film ever. And uh, mind you, Watership Down, what a very, well, let's just say, horrific film. But mind you, it's like a, an ultimate classic. Oh! Classic animated horror film. Oh my god, those trains are fighting each other. Which one of these trains is going to be assassinated? I think that. That white one there is taking the back cover, or the back car, of this train which is right there. Any moment? No, not really. But you know what, I'm just going to repack all of the components, because I think we're going to come into our last product, into the story view, which is going to be chronically amazing, oh yeah. And um, this is actually the, oh my god. Oh my god, I think, as I'm speaking here, I'm actually going to feel like I'm going to have a frog in my throat like I did in the past. Anyways, here's this product here. It's this one here. I wonder what it says there. Uh, European Goldfinch Flock, Twop Pack, Feeder and Roosting uh, Type Flock. I think this is the sort of flock you would usually find on birds feeding or, well, let's just say, roosting during, let's just say, the non breeding season. Uh, 13 pounds isn't 13 unlucky for a price like that, as always, as I can say. Um, mind you, it looks so, so interesting. You know, whenever I think of goldfinches, they're actually quite common looking birds. But at the same time, I do feel like goldfinches can also be a bit of a migratory sort of songbird, because I do hear that there are some goldfinches from France and Spain. Um, I'm pretty sure these are also the ones from the UK that literally winter there. I think they fly south for the winter in France and Spain and that's where they go here and then they come back into the UK to breed which is very nice uh, very very cool. Let's just see what we've got Generation 114 releases on or releasing in on the 1st of June 2020. I don't know if this is true or false or when or well, probably when secondary opens. I'm pretty sure it refers to secondary schools on September the 2nd, 2020, or for year 10 exams during June. Ah, oh, that sounds very confusing, isn't it? Like, you know, a 0.5 version of the generation could also be included as well. Ah, oh, I don't know if that's going to be true or false. But let's take a look at the back of the packaging because, oh, those trains are crashing it together, eh? Um, because I'm quite curious as you are. Yep, got a huge compilation of goldfinches here. They look quite nice in the way they've been sort of detailed I believe, very cool indeed and um, sort of looks like Pidgey from the Pokemon franchise but we're going to go ahead and unpack all of these um, birds in a sense and actually if I actually notice, if you don't actually realise but the packaging actually has some glued in artwork because uh, this was actually made from an, oh, an original um, envelope that was supposed to be this envelope but it's got these assets, these um, details and designs because Mind you, it was broken. I actually tried to open it so hard, like this, but I'm not going to do it like so, because, yep, the packaging died, and that's what it ended up as. Just a packaging and a packaging together, eh? It's very interesting. It's a bit like the Willy Wagtail dirty pack, but it's not, but that's all I could say. Um, let me just put up uh, the packaging away. Put the packaging away, of course because we're going to take a look at the gold finches and I think all of them are going to be the same they are going to be quite the same sort of bird but I'm pretty sure they might have some different uh, faces along the way this is one of the European gold finches as you can see there it's got a beautiful looking red 
and white saw patterning on the face, the beautiful patterns on the head. He's got a brown eye. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly. He's got a pink beak. Um, like many other finches do, very similar to what other finches and sparrows are alike. It's got a beautiful sort of wasp stripe uh, wing pattern as well. It's got some brown details at the bottom of its body. It's got a beautiful, um, well, let's just say, black lining, sort of face detailing, of course. And also, this part here it looks like a supercilium, but it's not. It's basically like this beautiful. This very weird black sort of square sort of eye line or I don't know sort of face patterning on the front right between the beak and the eye and I think those goldfinches even though their wings look similar I think they're going to have different faces now this one looks pretty different very interesting I've actually noticed that the faces on each goldfinch if I hold the camera up look so different this one here is actually quite different and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at every single goldfinch uh, along the way there this one's also pretty different you can start to see it's a little bit of white and uh, it's a bit offset that eye and if I go ahead and show you the other one here that's also a bit different as well very different as well and those trains are clashing indeed uh, I'm just moving the mouse a bit because I don't want the camera to basically um, um, just stop but I'll probably stop recording after I finish the video and probably just do the ending part looks pretty accurate um, yes it looks pretty much some of these are similar and some of these are different um, it's all down to how I detail the birds okay I'm just gonna move on to that one eh? well there's the other toys here I've just covered from previous videos uh, this one here it's got um, it's quite interesting there's like a very interesting um, difference with the heads there because there's like uh, one's like, you know, there's more reds and there's more blacks. Uh, I think this is like a total different sort of thing going on here. The very interesting sort of head detailing and designs. The tails look still very similar, I think, in colorization. In terms of colorization, as I would normally say, though. And let me take a look at the other four as well. There's this one here. Okay, so that looks pretty, um, very similar to the others. Okay, I think it's all down to how I actually um, draw and detail the heads and probably design the hats like so. I think I said the word hats and not heads. I'm getting a lot of mispronunciations in this video, didn't I? It's a bit like that time when I... Uh, you know what, my mouth is sort of getting a bit weaker now, but hopefully I'm getting there along the way though. Remember I did the video, you know, the flattened birds times for toy view, the flip up origami one I did and I actually said the word stretch and not stretch that was pretty weird wasn't it um, yep looks like all of the goldfinches in fact some of them are the same I think but I think the faces look quite different which is quite interesting I think it's just the um it's just that the wings the brown colorization and probably the tails and also the rear section of the feet and also this white part at the back I think they all look pretty similar but you know what that's all I could literally just say in this toy review so anyways I think that's just about it guys uh, sorry this video has gone a bit rough and ready because we had a whole bunch of pronunciations gone all wrong as I would normally do on my own up channel my videos can be quite rough but I do have one solution to this I've got Windows Movie Maker on this computer and this is actually a different computer because I don't usually tend to have VSDC because if I download the VSDC on this computer mind you it's going to basically make this computer crash or to have administration before I can download this but anyways with these trains still running and they're clashing with each other and amazingly nothing has broken off of these trains um, yes it looks like none of the detailing has broken off of these trains and mind you and uh, they all look good and speaking of good uh, if you want to see more great videos like this one here please give this video a like and subscribe for more like YouTube videos in the future as the whole coronavirus crisis continues and if you are struggling to cope with the coronavirus uh, crisis during lockdown or quarantine as it eases along the way though please go ahead and onto YouTube and start thinking about ways that you could literally be a lot more beneficial <laughs> beneficial 
and you will literally be, you know, a whole bunch of boredom. But anyways, I think that's just about it in this video. As always, I hope you enjoy life, and stay safe, and have fun, and I'm going to see you next time, thank you so much, thank you so much for watching, as I said it for the second time, actually I might do it for the third time, thank you so much for watching, as always, as the usual, and bye for now, and you know what, these clones are snooping as usual, I'd say, snooping as usual.